Okay, this is going to be a part two, uh, kind of finishing up the notes on, <clears throat> excuse me, projectile motion. Uh, you should have a handout for this. So there's two examples I'm going to go through, and then you have several more that you can work on and practice through um, that should be finished. So this example that you got, we've got a baseball thrown horizontally with a velocity of 44 meters. It's per second, travels a horizontal distance, 18 meters to the plate before it's caught. Um, again, helps to sketch these things out because we want to make sure we keep our side to side motion and our up and down motion separately. Um, so it tells us the ball is going 44 meters per second this way in the X direction. And it tells us how far it goes, which is 18 meters in the X direction. All right. So our questions, we got a few questions. How long does it stay in the air? And how far does it go before it ends up being caught? And so we should be able to answer these. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is to make a list of the information that we're given. What things do we know so that we can help solve the problem? So on the X side, we know the distance because it's going to go 18 meters. On the Y side, we don't know how far it's supposed to fall. On the X side, we know that it's going 44 meters per second. Um, on the Y side, remember that the velocity changes because of gravity. So we're going to put the acceleration and just to make things easy, we're going to use minus 10 uh, for our math. Um, we don't know how much time it takes. That was one of the things we need to be able to find. And again, we know that the initial up and down velocity, because if I throw a ball um, in terms of its up and down motion, when it leaves my hand, it's it's got speed in the X direction, which is kind of, it's hard to sometimes think about this, that it doesn't have any speed in the Y direction because me throwing it is basically the same thing as letting it fall. So if you look at this, you should be able to say, we need to start over here on the left-hand side because I've only got one question mark. On the right-hand side, I've got two question marks. So I got I don't have enough time, to, uh, I don't have enough things to solve. So again, we're trying to solve for time and distance. So understand if you look at the left-hand side, if we solve for time on the left-hand side, we also get the time on the right-hand side, and then we'll have enough information to solve for distance. These are always gonna be two-step problems. So we can solve for time on the X side, um, you can go back to your formula sheet. Again, you can use the formula over here on the left, uh, velocity is distance over time, or we can use it where it's rearranged, which is distance equals velocity times time. And we're solving for time, so we're going to have to rearrange it either way. But if once you've got your things listed out, again, we can use either of these two formulas. Again, you might want to pause when you need to to write things down to make sure that you're not missing out on things. So if we plug our numbers in, our velocity is 44 and our distance is 18. If we rearrange this to solve for the time and do the math, we end up getting the time being 0.41 seconds. So again, you might want to pause so that you can just copy this example down. <clears throat> again, so that was our first question. How much time does it take? So the ball stays in the air for 0.41 seconds, nearly a half second, which is not very long. Um, and then what we can then do is answer our second question, which is how far does it fall? Um, and so that's our up and down distance. Um, since we saw for time in the X, that's also the same time as Y. Time is always gonna be the same in both directions. Um, there's not a separate time that's gonna take, take for something to happen. So once we plug the time in, we can then answer how far does it drop, which is our distance in the Y direction. So we're gonna use this formula. Um, again, VIT plus one half AT squared. VI is zero, so again, we can make this go away. And then a distance is just one half AT squared. So if we plug in all of our numbers, again, negative 10 is our acceleration, uh, 0.41 is our time, and we just do the math on this one, and it tells us that it, the answer would be negative uh, 0.84 meters. If you didn't use negative 10 right here, you would get 0.84 meters, but again, hopefully you would know that that means the ball is going in the negative direction as it's going down. So there we go. We answered both of those questions. We figured out how much time it would take, and we figured out how far it would fall uh, during that same amount of time. Right. So I'm going to move on to the third example that we have. Um, and this one's a little bit more complicated because some of the information that's on it and a lot of the questions that we'll have on here. So again, pause when you need to. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. But uh, again, the purpose of the video is for you to put a pause and, and to go back if you did miss something. So we got a ball that's got a mass of three kilograms. Hint, this doesn't matter. It's thrown horizontally from a cliff that's 10 meters high. So my uh, distance in the height is 10 meters. And uh, it's going to travel to point C, which means it's going to kind of follow a curve pattern and land down here at C. And if we assume B is half is five meters from the ground, that's going to be halfway up and A is going to be all the way to the top. So a number of questions. What's the initial vertical velocity of the ball? Vertical is up and down. So how fast is it going up and down? Hopefully we know at this point zero because 
if we're throwing something sideways or we're dropping it, it's still got the same vertical speed. So next question is how much time is required to get it to the ground, All right? So if we look at this equation, we should be able to figure out how much time is gonna be there. Now solving for time is complicated a little bit because it's not at the beginning of the formula, it's in the formula. So think about what we've got here. What things do we know? So if we write out, this is kind of the whole thing solved because I was running out of space. But if we start with our formula right here, this is kind of how we would fill it in. The minus 10 is our height. Now, I made this go away because the um, initial velocity is zero. And so almost always this part of the formula is going to disappear, which is why you don't see it back over here. And then we've got one half AT squared. So I've got one half minus 10 and T squared. So this first part is me plugging in our numbers. And then at that point, it's just math. Um, so one half of negative 10 is negative five. So that's all that I've done moving from the first part to the second part. Um, I'm trying to get t by itself, so I need to divide both sides by minus 5 to cancel out this minus 5. So negative 10 divided by negative 5 ends up being 2. And then if I divide the minus 5 off, it goes away right here. And then remember, anytime we've got t squared, we've got to take the square root of both sides. So to get to this last part, I took the square root of both sides. And the square root of 2 is going to be 1.4. So this is just me working the algebra steps out to get to the time component. So the time's gonna be 1.4 seconds. We have some more questions. What is the vertical acceleration of the ball at point A? This is not really a trick question, but it doesn't involve math because in the vertical direction, the acceleration is always gonna be due to gravity. It's always gonna be negative 9.8 or negative 10 in this case, which is what we just assumed. There's no math to do on that one. That's just a fact. What's the horizontal velocity of the ball at point C? And again, this is also doesn't involve any math because we're gonna always assume that there's no air resistance. So if the velocity is five meters per second in the horizontal direction to begin with, it's gonna continue being five meters per second the entire time because there's nothing pushing it faster and there's nothing slowing it down if we pretend that there's no air. So here's a math question. How far from the edge of the cliff does it land in the X direction? So we're basically saying, how far does it go left and right? So we're gonna do a little math on this one. We're gonna go back to our velocity equals D over T. Again, this is our X direction uh, formula. We've already know, we already know that the velocity is five. And just a moment ago, we figured out what the time was. We figured out the time was 1.4. So we've got two of our three things to be able to solve for. Um, we do need to rearrange our equation because 5 equals D divided by 1.4. So you'd need to multiply both sides by 1.4. Um, that's going to cancel the 1.4 out on the right side. And then 5 times 1.4 would give us 7 meters. That's the answer to our question. It tells us exactly how far it goes. So again, I didn't work this one out by listing everything out because there was multiple questions with it. Um, but again, that's probably the best way to do is just continue making a list of things in the X direction and making a list of things in the Y direction just so you can keep them straight. All right. So those are basically the problem types you've got. We may have questions about how far does it go this way or how high is a cliff this way or how much time does it take or how fast is it going? Um, and again, you should have enough information to start solving for one thing. And generally it ends up being a two-step problem with both of those formulas. So finish up your practice problems. There's some additional examples on your note pages that you need to do. And I'll probably have answers posted in the classroom. Make sure your notes get uploaded so that you can get credit for your work. Um, check your grades, make sure that there's nothing missing, get your late stuff turned in. If you need to take or retake the quiz, um, you need to do that. If you check your grades, you can make your little slider thingy in your grade book. You can see how much change, changing a grade would, would uh, or retaking the quiz might help your grade. We do have a test next week, so you need to complete your test review before next Monday. And for some reason, there's a random number seven there. I don't know, maybe that's for good luck. All right, thanks for hanging in there with me and uh, take care.